Hello and welcome to another art tutorial with Mr. Dolby. What I'm going to show you today is I'm going to demonstrate uh, Berta Morris. As you can see here from the speed that video before, I've done a little sketch of this image. What I'll do with this image is I will also, uh, you will have the option to copy this one if you so wish. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, watercolours. Um, you can use uh, coloured pencils. Uh, the ultimate aim for this is really looking at Burton Morris's work and looking at these really, really dark lines and these solid block colours. That's the success criteria for this, basically. That is what you are aiming for. So what I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with just doing the background. Um, and again, I will speed it up in places, but um, ultimately we're trying to get this as solid colour as possible. If you are going to use watercolours, Okay, I've got a little tin here. Obviously, it's very, very simple. You are putting uh, water into there. And like I've said to giving you tips before we're painting with watercolours, if you make sure little bubbles begin to appear on the surface. If bubbles begin to appear on the surface, then the uh, paint is the right consistency to paint with. So what I would do, because these colours are really, really solid and bold, I would go straight out of your um, paint box. Now, what I will say with this, it's also it's a good idea, as you may see down here, to have a little bit of paper to test your paint on. So I'm just going to have a quick look at what colour it's coming out. It's coming out a little bit darker than I want it, um, but I think for these purposes, for this demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use this colour. Okay, so I'm just going to start to, again, really get the uh, paintbrush in there, really get the water in there, and I'm just going to start to put it on. Now again, what you don't want to do, you don't want to scribble it on. You want to make sure that it's nice. You go in one direction at a time and get a really nice thing. As you can see here, these little rough edges are starting to appear. So what I'm going to do, it means I haven't got enough paint on my brush. So again, just putting more water onto, into the palette and working it. I'm going to just speed it up um, and you can watch me paint. Okay, I've got the background done there. Um, as you can see, uh, watercolours are not necessarily the best paints to do uh, really solid block colours. If you have got acrylics at home, um, then you can use acrylic paint. That does give you a much more of a solid block colour. But as you can see, I've done the background, and what I'm going to now do is I am going to change my water. Uh, it's quite blue, but it's a good idea if you're using watercolours to change your water as often as possible because you don't want it to get dirty. Right, um, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work my way through the colours. As you can see, these letters and this area here are white. So because my paper is white, I'm just going to leave that one. I'm not going to bother painting that with the watercolours. It's not going to come out that nice. So I'll do that, work my way through and speed it up. But as you can see, observe the way I'm moving my paintbrush. Again, really try and keep these colours. If you are using watercolours, you want to try and keep the tone as solid as possible, as consistent as possible, which is quite difficult with uh, watercolours. So I'm going to start working my way through. I'm going to leave, as you will notice, uh, I will leave the black lines until last. Right, as you can see now, um, I've got most of the colours in. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to turn and look at my black. Now, if you are feeling brave, you can obviously paint your brush back in. I would go, tend to go for quite a, a small brush here. Okay. Um, if you're not feeling brave, any sort of wide permanent marker, uh, whiteboard marker, that kind of thing, and you could do that and use that for the outline. Just giving that effect, that big bold outline that Burton Morris does. So I'm going to go and start painting it in. Hopefully I won't make any mistakes, uh, but you can watch me if you want, but I'm going to again speed this up. Um, well, actually, before I do carry on, before I do uh, what I should have said at the beginning, is what I've done is I've masked and taped off this part on my paper. I'm using A3 paper here. Um, so I've masked it off because this is also, this is not a rectangle, it's not a, a, in the same uh, proportion. So I've changed this canvas using the masking tape to, to make it uh, correct. So if you want to do the same thing, by all means, it's kind of what professional artists probably would do. 
Anyway, so I'm now going to put the black in and you can watch your wife. Right, as you can see, I'm almost all done. Um, actually, what if I missed? I've missed that this bit in the middle. I will do that. Also, if you look at mine in places, there are some white gaps. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I will go around and tweak that and make sure that those bits are nice and clear. That's if you really, really, really want to get the real high, high level. So I'm making sure I haven't got any of those white bits in there. I'm going to go, oh, I missed out my donut as well. I will go back and go back to it. You can watch the end of this and uh, I will just speed this up. So, uh, that is pretty much it. If you look at this, I've pretty much got it all. My idea really is to get the big, bold colours, and you can really see how the black paint really makes the other colours really, really pop out. That's what Barton Morris is aiming for. I think I've pretty much achieved that. Um, okay, give it a go, have fun, and that is that from me. Okay, goodbye.